I'm going to be honest, this wasn't too surprising, but TJ Dillashaw has just announced his retirement from the sport following a horrendous shoulder injury that turned out to be even worse than he imagined. TJ Dillashaw came back from surgery about a month ago and he just got notified by his surgeon that he probably has to go under a second surgery due to how bad the injury is. And it's going to be a very long time before he's able to come back. And because of that, TJ has decided to retire. The surgeon actually said it's the worst shoulder injury he's ever seen in his life. And that brings up two questions. If the shoulder injury was that bad, how was he able to fight? Not just a shoulder injury, but the worst shoulder injury this surgeon has ever seen? How did TJ pass the medicals? How did he pass the doctors? And number two, if the shoulder injury wasn't as bad going into the fight and only got worse because of the fight due to the wrestling, due to the strikes and everything involved, Eljamain was definitely putting a lot of pressure on that shoulder, especially when he took TJ to the ground. So it probably even made the injury much worse. Again, I asked just like before, why would he go into the fight? Why would he go into the fight with a shoulder injury? He did mention that he thought he could win because he beat Corey Sandhagen with an injured knee. He went to try his hand against Eljamain with an injured shoulder, but him fighting with a shoulder injury potentially caused at him his entire career if the injury actually did get much worse inside the fight we do know that tj did expect to fight again he expected to get the shoulder surgery and then come back after to go for the belt again but now with what the surgeon has told him tj potentially ended his own career here's something important we have to know how long does it take to recover from a shoulder surgery it would take roughly nine months to maybe even a year to fully come back and be able to fight in all of it you're back to normal right a lot of recovery after shoulder surgery sometimes could even take six months and tj was expecting to come back after a year and the fact now he would decide to retire means it's going to take even longer than a year for him. He might be able to take the Conor McGregor route, get out of the USADA pool, and maybe start taking some stuff in order for him to recover even faster. Maybe he is able to come back if he takes all of the measurements, because again, this is his life. He decided to retire so he could do whatever he wants now, right? I don't see how he can't do everything possible to recover, and hopefully he comes back faster than expected, and he decides to unretire, get back into the USADA pool, and fight again. Hopefully he's able to do that, but... With what we know right now, at the end of the day, it's a shame, man, because if you don't count the PED, TJ is definitely one of the greatest bantamweights of all time. Even argued to be the greatest bantamweight of all time. But him taking PEDs and all the accusations and everything has overshadowed his entire career. And now a lot of people don't even see him in greatness like that, which is another drastic mistake that he made in his career. Not just the decision to fight with a shoulder injury that ended his career, but also with the PEDs has overshadowed everything that he's done. I mean, he started in the big times by fighting for the Ultimate Fighter and losing ultimately to John Dodson. John Dodson eventually became a flyweight and fought for the belt multiple times in that division. So it definitely wasn't a bad loss for TJ in the fact that he lost to a very good fighter, but he got TKO'd in the first round. And then there was a repeated pattern in TJ's career where he would win four times, lose once. Win four times, lose once. This actually happened three times throughout his UFC career, but in those four win streaks, he did become a bantamweight champion from being the man that has one of the biggest upsets in UFC history when he beat Henan Barrao back in 2014. He was a massive underdog that nobody thought was going to win as Barrao looked unstoppable. Barrao was just a monster in that bantamweight division that only Dominic Cruz was sought to be the guy that could defeat him. But then TJ out of nowhere, who really didn't beat anybody worthy up to that point. In fact, he was only coming off one win against Mike Easton. And before that, he lost to Rafael Sunsau. Not only defeated Hennem Barral, but absolutely destroyed him from beginning to end. Dropped him in the first round, and then Hennem Barral never recovered. Barral actually said after that right overhand from the first round that he doesn't even remember the rest of the fight. The next thing he remember was himself backstage. That fight and the rematch where TJ destroyed him again caused one of the biggest downfalls in UFC history with Henan Barral's career. TJ then had a very close fight with Dominic Cruz, the GOAT. Rough first two rounds and then in the next three he was finding success off of the leg kicks. And besides with the Elgermaine Sterling fight, it was the only time we saw TJ get taken down repeatedly in a fight. And ultimately lost his belt after defending it twice against Joe Soto who was a fairly forgettable opponent for TJ. But Henan Barral for the rematch which was a big one. And after the Dominic Cruz fight, he went on a four-fight win streak and he looked like the best in the world. His revenge against Rafael Sansa was insane to watch at UFC 200, where he started to implement some of the wrestling techniques that a lot of fighters are using today, revolutionized some techniques 
like the outside trip double leg takedown that you saw even Rose Nami Yunus use against Yuani on Jacek in the fifth round of their fight, and it's a tricky one to defend. Just like many of other TJ's techniques, like the switch combinations, nobody in UFC history does it better than TJ Dillashaw. When it comes to shifting, switching stances while you're throwing combos, TJ is the best in the world to do it, and a lot of fighters still don't do it the same way. He went on to defeat the dangerous John Lineker after, and then won the belt against Cody Garbrandt in a fight that looked like he was going to lose, and Cody Garbrandt at the time seemed to be be the best skilled bantamweight in the world and TJ took that away from him really exposed Cody Garbrandt's fight IQ and then in the rematch afterward the same kind of thing Cody was trying to go for the three right hooks in a row and TJ intelligently every single time was getting on the outside of those angling off while Cody's head was on the center line and TJ was just banging him with his own right so he became a two-time bantamweight champion and also defended it again something that only Dominic Cruz was able to do but with how special Dominic Cruz did it he didn't lose his belt to anybody. He came back from the injury to win the belt, then defeated Ryan Faber, then lost to Cody Garbrandt. And after TJ's fight with Cody, we go into the Henry Cejudo fight, and TJ decided to go down to flyweight, which is usually the harder move to become a double champion. When you want to become a double champ, you usually go up in weight class because the weight cut is not going to hurt you as bad. Going down in weight classes is going to hurt you even more. It's much more difficult because you're draining your body to do it. And he popped for PDs in that fight and got finished in 32 seconds. It was the most shameful moment of TJ's career, and he got suspended for two years, man. And only was able to fight twice more. Let's be honest, he got gifted a decision against Corey Sanhagen. Corey should have won that fight. But we do have to give credit to TJ for coming back, fighting with an injury, and making it competitive against one of the best bantamweights in the world. And then got a third crack at the belt against Aljamain Sterling with a shoulder injury and got beat from beginning to end in a fight that he probably should not have taken. TJ definitely has some great accomplishments in his career, but overshadowed by bad mistakes that he's made. When we look back in the record books, when we look back at history and legacy, a lot of people are not going to be looking TJ's way because of what he did, because of the decisions that he made. But technically speaking, when you talk about his skills and such, there is barely any bantamweight ever that compares to TJ Dillashaw. 